Hello everyone, um, today I've got um, probably way too many coins. Jeez, I'll go overboard. I went down the bank and I had 600 bucks, so <laughs> I just kept pumping them and I sort of clicked. That's a few rolls. So I got $240 worth of uh, 50 cent pieces, which is 24 rolls. Each roll weighs 311 grams. All right, so this in total, what I weighed on the scales, it was about 13 kilos, 14 kilos. And uh, I took a little bag, um, which I'll show on a video that I'll put lesson number one. Don't overdo it when you're getting your coins or make sure you got a trolley. And lucky I had a trolley next to me and I could put them all in. But um, extremely heavy. So uh, I've got here the $1, $300 worth, 15 rolls. Each of those rolls are 180 grams. The 50 cents, like I said, are 311 grams. And I've got 24 rolls of them. And the 20 cent pieces is 15 rolls of them. And they weigh 226 grams each. Um, so yeah, quite a number. But uh, yeah, lesson number one. Don't get a heap of coins unless you've got something to carry them in. And now I'm looking at it. I'm going to be here for ages doing these. We'll get into it. And uh, hopefully there's... Lots of nice coins in here to find. All right, let's check them out, eh? So I kept 28 50 cent pieces in total. Six one dollars and eight 20 cent pieces for a grand total of 42 coins and $25 dollars and 60 cents. And then down here, these 50 cent pieces here are all error coins. So this one here is a 2017, a 2017, a 2016, a 20... All three of them have in common a cud on the back of the brew. And the 17 is in exactly the same spot, exactly. This one is bigger than this one. So that's a progression error. These two came from exactly the same die. This one a bit later, this one earlier. That looks dull, but it's just, it started to like patina. It's beautiful under there, no marks or anything. It's lovely condition. And so um, I'll flip them over, 27, you can see on that side, beautiful condition. Same as this one, 2016 and a 2013. I don't know if I said 15 before, but a 2013, 16, two 17s, all with the cud in these two exact same place. These two are just out a bit. This one's around there, and this one is up the back a little bit. But I'll show close ups. Then here is a 2018, I already got six of them, a 2018 IRB, low mint, 3.7 mil, beautiful condition, and on the bicep just here is a flat, sort of little longish cud, so there's a die chip in the die, just starting off, 
they should be getting progressively worse and worse. The, the cud on there should be getting higher and higher and higher. So someone out there should have these getting bigger or some that were smaller where it was just beginning. Lovely coin. And then here is a 2005 and I haven't had one for quite a while but it's got the cud on the hat and on the elbow and just a little bit there at the bottom of the chaplain's robe. So nice, I've got a video on these where there's about 35 different errors I've found on these. Most prolific coin ever with errors, for sure. If you look at my video, you'll see tons. And then here is something that's really, really hard to find, as in identifying them, and extremely rare and hard to find, as in to find them once you know how to identify them. And they're 1983s, the two of them. Two 1983. And the two of these are double bar error coins. I'll show close-ups of them. But um, very hard to identify. The double bars on these are not the same as the double bar 79 and 80 variety. They're really, because the, the, mint, the mint admits they were in there on purpose, accidentally. They shouldn't have been, but they were designed properly. These ones are very low, wideish, like speed humps, and very much resemble the 1966 double bar, which is wide, low, roundish speed hump bars on them. These ones are sharp, like railway lines. These ones are like the 66. They're low, wide, and round like a speed hump. This is the 1983 double bar. The last, the other 1983 I showed you was a nice, clean, really top condition 1983 50 cent piece. Just to show you how flat the fields are behind the emu's head. So you can see beyond the emu's head here. Is I'm lucky it's just picking it up, but you can just see those two um, minor humps there. In straight lines going across and they're very similar to the 1966 double bar. Now the 79 and the 80 double bar are very clear um, and they were put there by mistake. They ground them out they said happened two years in a row. Now these double bars here, the same as the 66, I'm just guessing that if you really do look at it, it's continuing on that bit of reed in there is going through. And human error. I just think the master die maker unwittingly just continued on with that reading and then tried to rub it out, scrub it out. And this is how come we end up with so many different years with these double bars. There can't be dye fill there all the time in that exact same area. They look like the reading. They're the same as the 66, same as the 79 and 80, just difference in appearance. Um, and that's what I'm going on. These are extremely rare to find, very hard to identify them. I'm lucky I've got that 
to actually show those two light lumps there. So look for the 83s, check them every angle you can with light. You want light bouncing off it to see them. And um, you'll find them. And I've only found a handful of these in 25 years. They're extremely hard to find. And I've got two of them in one hit. So, beautiful. So, very good. Yeah, so the um, 1983, very hard to find, very hard to identify. If you looked at them just with a magnifying glass and you didn't look, know you were looking for a flat field like this is up here, it's flat, you wouldn't probably see them. I look at all 83s from every angle with light to get this reflection looking for them. I've been looking for them for ages. Ten, two decades and I've only had a you know, handful <laughs> and this is the most, two. So if you're looking for these, I can only tell you what they look like. I can give you an idea what they look like with the video. But in your hand, when you look for these things, you're going to have to turn them around. You're really going to have to work hard to find uh, double bar errors on anything bar the 79 and 80. And the 66s, they stand out really easy too. But on anything else that they're on, the 83s, 93s, 97s, um, I can't remember, a couple of 2000s. Uh, got a, there's, there's a few years. I, I've never written them down really, to tell you the truth. So there's, it's, what I found is about maybe seven years including the 66 so it's about four other years 500 other years other than the 66 79 and 80 that you can find these on these are minute very hard low could be broken they're hard to find um, so um, yeah I can only give you this info you got to everyone's got to do their homework for the for the coins I, I can't feed you everything um, and so I can show you these as best I can ex explain what they look like the years they're on and then that's where you get your experiences when you start finding them and identifying them so anyhow that was a really good noodle for that it took ages I did some videos in between the proof and the mint sets PNC the rotary PNC um and what to not to do when you go to get coins and that's don't just grab them play them what you get these were oh, what, oh it was 13.7 kilos weighed up so extremely heavy i forgot the top 20 cent pieces so i'd already said goodbye <laughs> but i'm doing this afterwards because i forgot about them uh so i got two really nice beautiful condition um, change over 20 cent pieces 2016 and they're 4.5 mil so they're pretty good but they're in exceptional condition the two of those that's the obverse side and that's the reverse side uh, but oh, that one's a little bit there but the front of them really really good there's a little bit of dirt on that but I'll keep them they're low mint and they look really good I like the old decimal pre decimals uh, and then I kept a 2013 100 years of Canberra we've got maybe about seven or eight of them um, the mintage on them is 6.2 mil I like it I think there's a really nice design on there uh, a 2021 JC 20 cents and no mintage figure on them as yet only one in there it was sixty dollars worth. I got of twenties. Um, Nineteen seventy-one, twenty cent, nine million. And then here is a nineteen eighty-one, three and a half claw Canadian minted, Australian twenty cent piece. The first claw underneath the bar of the two is 
in half. Three fifths to be exact and looks like a bullet. This side, the planchet is flat and the bottom of the certain letters and the ones are fishtailed, curved. The other two, Canberra and the Welsh, are concave and flat based. And any claws filled uh, on the back that are small, or whatever, is die fill. Um, and then here is the example of this one. This is a Canadian minted three and a half claw. This here is a Welsh minted. The Welsh minted 1981 20 cent pieces as well, 50 million of them. This is a Welsh minted three and a half claw error coin. The first claw, as with this and the camera one, is die fill. They didn't have dies with these that had the, the half claw like these. There's always a remnant of that claw above it. As hard as looking at those 83s are with those bumps, that's as hard as it is to find the top part of that claw that's been filled in, die fill. I'll do a close up on that and I'll show you how you can be fooled to get in this coin thinking you've got the Canadian minted one and it's not, it's the Welsh or Canberra the Canberra ones also have die fill they can be the first claw and it looks like a Canadian but the giveaway is that planchet is concaved and they're flat based letters all of them this one is flat and all the letters well most of the letters and the numbers have fishtails on it so you can see the two comparisons there she sits on top of that. They used high pressures in Wales and Canberra and it pushed it down more. So I'll do a close up on not the three and a half claw. I've done heaps of videos on close ups on them so people can look at them. Same as these three here, the 79 and 80. I've done heaps on them. I've done one on the 94 so I won't do a close up on that. The wide date 1994. No close up 79, 80 double bow, no close up. Canadian minted, no close up. The error, the Welsh minted, 20 cent piece. I'll do a close up. And the one dollar, be a close up. So this is the Welsh minted die fill coin. And you can see the die fill on the first claw. And look in here, there's plenty of die fill on the fourth core. Uh, I'll try and move it around a bit so you can see the top of that first claw where the remainder is still there. They could be really hard, even harder than this to see because they could be nearly non-existent. And the fourth claw would probably pick up too from the side. But straight on they always look like they're die fill but when you turn around to the light I'd say 90% of the time you'll see all the claws are there. Now you can see on uh, the fourth claw that very thin um, line which is the remainder of the claw that's shown how filled that die actually was. Well that thin line is what you're looking for on the top of that first claw. There's always something there. I'm going to have to search in there and see if I can get the angle right. So you can see if I do this, look at the top of that first claw. See the little spike on the top there, that spike? Like what's well, a lot thinner than the one on the fourth claw. But that spike is the remainder. So when these start die filling, at some stage it's going to get filled right up and that's where these really good half claw Welsh or Canberra minted 20 cent pieces start looking like the Canadian minted. But I've found that when you find these that there's like that fourth one that's filled, if you find the first one really filled up like this, you usually find all the others that are filled up, you find them missing in the middle or the top one, top of the second and third uh, or different combinations. 
but you you got to look for that spike on the top of that first one plus on the other side being the concave planter and flat bottoms on the letters so nice find though still a real nice hard area to find Just here, just showing you quickly the bottom of the ones, you can see that they're flat. The, um, the I, the A's, the T. These I's always come up good on the Canadian minted coins. With the curved base on them, you can always pick them on them. You can, these ones are flat, the H's are flat, the T's flat, the A's are flat, I's flat, and the planchet is concaved. But that's a Welsh minted, and the reason this is a Welsh minted coin is all on the nostrils of the um, platypus can't pick it out on here with my 20 times mag right up there there's two small nostrils on here the Canberra uh, the Canberra and the Canadian minted 20 cent piece have large open nostrils really large the ones on these you can just make out the one on the right you can just see a little remnant on the right side just there and there. That's a small nostril. Only the Welsh minted coins have the small nostrils on the platypus. They're small as in size, but they're actually spread apart widely. The Canberra and the Canadian minted both have large, big open nostrils. I'll see if I can get one. I've got another Welsh coin, minted coin. So that's the Welsh minted nostrils on there, which is what was on that coin I just showed you, the error coin, Diefel. So they're, they're sort of whitish, but they're small, they're narrow, uh, like a teardrop. And I'll show you the, the Canberra and the uh, Canadian minted ones. They're, they're, lar they're large, both of them. So if you find small nostrils on the 1981, it's always the Welsh one. Uh, and this is the Canberra minted 1981. And you can see they're quite, they're closer together and they're nice big, roundish, eggy type. And that's the same as on the Canadian minted. They're the large nostril like that. I'll flip it over to just prove there that it is the 1981 and it has got flat letters on the bottom of the lettering. This is a really good example. They're all flat. There's no curves on the T, the A's. So that's the that's the Canberra minted with the large nostrils. And the Canadian is the same. And here is a really top grade 1981 three and a half core minted Canadian 20 cent piece, Australian 20 cent piece. And on, you can see on the ones there, they're curved. You can see on the bottom of the eye, how it's curved, the A's to a little extent, the T's are always curved, the two I's are beautifully always good, dog bones at the bottom curved, the H next to it curved, the T curved, the I curved, okay so that's that's on that side, the planchet is flat on this too, Queen sits on top, turn the rover. And there is your half claw at the front. 
The Owens look dice a little bit, they had a little, they, you got to get the light on them properly. Oh, there you go. So now you can see it nice, I've covered that shadow. So, yeah, nice there. And we'll show you the nostrils now, and you'll see these are the large nostrils. The one on the le on the right has been squashed over, but that is the large nostrils, the same as the Canberra. So the large nostrils, they're not going to be exact same because remember this is, has the half claw as the uh, basically the mint mark, and so this is a large nostril, Canberra's large nostril. They might be big as each other because they are different dye. Uh, but they large nostrils, whereas the Welsh one are uh, small and they look further spaced. So there you go. So they're the three types of uh, coin, 1981 coins that you can get. And then this one, beautiful, again really hard, one of the hardest varieties to find by far is the 2001 And this one's all joined IRB. You can get all joined IRB, I spaced RB joined, and all spaced IRB on the obverse of these. They, this particular coin comes with three different obverse varieties to get. But they can all be matched up with the variety on a variety. With This has the small SD initials. So the reverse die there's two you can get, large, standard, and small variety. And on the front, they can be matched up with three different obverse die varieties. And that's, like I said, the all join, I spaced RB join, and all spaced. So that's, and that's extremely hard. I've got two now that I've found. Um, and they're really hard to find, so look for them. Um, if you want them in your collection. So yeah, that is it for now. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching again, and bye bye.